topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests, and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Triversity Talk. I am very excited to have you here with me tonight. And I am Wendy Stewart, and I'm coming to you live from New York City tonight, where we are, yes, indeed, in a heat wave. But how dare I even complain, considering with what's going on in the rest of the country, temperatures of like 105. So I have to tell you, um, I'm getting on my soapbox about global warming because we all know that it's real, but even I, I was in denial when they told us we were getting flash flooding on Sunday night and I was driving from Pennsylvania to New York. There were not a ton of cars out and the rain was really heavy. And I'm like, I can drive in this. I'm a really good driver. And the rain got heavier and heavier and I was doing really well till my exit got cut off and I was taken on a detour around Seven Lakes. Seven lakes that happen to be flooding with the water coming out of them, debris coming out of them, and rocks on the road. And it felt like I was on that for an eternity. And that took me to a highway where I had at least three inches of water on each side of my car. So a friend of mine told me, you need six inches for the car to stop working. So there you go. I was three inches short of that. But let me tell you, it was very harrowing. And I kept getting these alerts on my phone and you know, I know climate change is real, but I don't know what made me ignore them. I don't know what made me think that this wasn't going to affect me. You know, so often we think, oh, it's not going to be as bad as they said it is, but it was. And um, I am here to tell you, please pay attention to that climate change is really happening. And, um, you know, we really have to protect ourselves and just in general, be more vigilant. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox now. <laughs> so um, I'm feeling very colorful tonight. And I'm feeling colorful tonight because I have a very, very colorful guest. His last name is Hughes, H-U-E-S, like the color Hughes or Hughes of the rainbow. That's how I like to think of it. My guest tonight is proud queer artist, and I love that he describes himself that way, on a mission to infuse color, excitement, and joy into the world through painting, illustration, and mural installations. I can't wait to talk about that. They use their work to push the boundaries of society and embrace the diversity of the human experience. And you know what? I can't think of a better way to use one's artistic talent. So let us all welcome Stevie Hughes. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy. At least I coordinated my colors with you, you know? <laughs> you look so great. All of the well, colors. <laughs> we love all of the colors. You know what? I, I really love colors. And um, going through your work, I have to tell you, you know, everyone's got different as art. Everyone creates different kinds of art, but you're really on to your art is happy. It's really happy. You can't help but look at anything that you create and not feel good. So um, we need that thank in you. the world now. So, well, amen. Well, thank Hell you. yeah. Amen. Hell yeah. All right. So you're coming to us from Seattle. I am currently in Seattle. Yes. Originally from New Jersey, New York, uh, but recently moved to seattle in january so you, just oh, so it was as recent as january now what made you leave the northeast i'm curious well i left new york i was in new york for just under 10 years i like just missed my 10-year new yorker mark um and i moved out to la um i had opportunities out in la to pursue and sure. i loved new york i never thought i was going to leave new york um but wow. i uh 
caught the West Coast bug and was in LA for about eight years and uh, then did a, a tour of the US last year, did a road trip for 10 months and landed on Seattle as the next spot. So, so, and you know what, that was really interesting to me because, and then we'll talk about what you've done as an artist, art director, graphic designer, and all of that. But you kind of um, jumped off the map to do, it was an eight month road trip. Am I correct? 10 months, 10 months plus. That's okay. That's almost a year. So how did you decide to do that? Did like LA just really catapult you into saying, I need to like get my head out there in a different way? Yeah, it was, I mean, partially because of the pandemic and because of the job that I had landed during the pandemic, I was able to have something where I could work remotely. And uh, I had met a partner who also was working remotely. And so we decided to just take advantage of that uh, while we could. And uh, yeah, see some places we've never been before. Both of us were kind of like one foot out of LA, not sure where to go. Right. So like, well, let's try a bunch of different places. So uh, I, I love this, that you were working um, remotely. So now you fall into the category. I read about these people. They're called nomads. And they were able, <laughs> and, and they went to like places like Bali. You realize you could have gone to Bali too. You know? I mean, if my tiny little Nissan Versa could have driven me there. <laughs> right, right. But people were like relocating all oh yeah the let me tell you how i had some friends I that went to mexico city and like love yeah. mexico city and are still there now friends from new york that were like oh yeah now right. we live in mexico right and and you know what no one's really talking about how people ended up dispersing because of the pandemic and then didn't come back they and many people from the United States have relocated, not just to Mexico City, to there, they've gotten, I think with uh, being a nomad, you can apply for, there's certain places, I know Portugal, couldn't you get mm-hmm. like a six month uh, work visa there? Yeah, I think so. I, there's some countries too, where like, they just have really uh, very open like work laws. So I don't, I haven't done all of the research internationally, but yeah, there's a lot of places that you can go spend three, six months. Wow. Well, just so you can feel sorry for me, I rotted here during the entire pandemic. <laughs> I read about y'all who went everywhere. <laughs> and no, I'm, I'm just joking. I, For me, it was incredibly creative because I was here and I had to come up with new ways, right, as a creative yeah. person to um, get my work out there. And you were very lucky that you, land, you and your partner both landed jobs that allowed you the freedom. At a very... Be- time to find jobs we were both really lucky right so i'm curious you you went probably all around the country what was your least favorite place and why i i wouldn't say it was my least favorite but my biggest disappointment maybe just my expectations were really high was austin texas i i've heard such great things about austin over the years and i was like it's fine uh it reminded me of of southern california a lot and so i was like okay so this is kind of what i'm used to because i did uh, this already right yeah. <laughs> right. but I'm, uh wow and some great things there great barbecue uh and other things but uh yeah well, south overall, by southwest like, okay. is there too they do the big south by southwest festival mm-hmm. which is so great but that's interesting that austin you know and it's supposed to have a lot of culture but you're, it, you're... the art community was great there. I will oh, say, yeah. like, I really enjoyed going to like the art walks and stuff that were there. Um, I I was also at that point of the trip, I feel like where we had just finished New York and we were like m- maybe like 75 percent done with the trip. And the biggest drive we had to was like New York straight to Austin. We like didn't stop anywhere in between. Right. And so at that point of the trip, we were just exhausted. So I was like, maybe that yeah. painted my perception of it. But yeah. yeah, it could really color like the way you see things. And I guess I already know the answer. I guess your favorite place to settle down was Seattle. Seattle really surprised me. There were a couple of places that surprised me, but Seattle just kind of checked all the boxes for right now. And it did. Uh, yeah, it's because you like here. coffee. It's because you like coffee. <laughs> it's because I love coffee. <laughs> it's because I need the caffeine. Uh, right. <laughs> Right. That's so cliche, right? Seattle and coffee. But um, from everything I've read, Seattle ha- offers a really desirable, li- you know, the word lifestyle, right? Aren't we all looking for a lifestyle? You know, and, and I'll lay it out to you. Um, I'm based out in New York. 
And this show, Triversity Talk, is um, named after our LGBTQ organization, which is in Milford, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And how? what is my connection? I go there on the weekends because it's my sanity. And we also have a wonderful center there that services New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Um, and again, the more rural areas. So it, it gives me some kind of meaning to be out there. I need to yeah. have that. But, it, but Pennsylvania is also so damn beautiful and um new york and i'm sure you've heard this the cr the crime I'm, I'm reading things from people they write on these blogs stop scaring people the crime is lower than it's ever been no it is not and stop lying about what is out there you know but to be able to go to a beautiful place right seattle is known you, lots of trees and it lots rains trees, a lot though lots of water lots yeah of water. i mean this time of year, it's really not raining so much, uh, but it's the summer is just gorgeous here because it's beautifully like high 70s. Um, the sun rises at like five in the morning and sets at like 10 o'clock at night. It's like ah. all <laughs> sun all day. Yeah. I mean, the winter is definitely I mean, it doesn't like get like snow accumulation or anything, but it's definitely gloomy for a long time. Well, it's gloomy but, uh, here in the Northeast. Look at how gloomy it, and icy cold. Seattle doesn't get that cold in the winter. No, it's like barely like just kind of around like freezing temperatures sometimes, but right. not too bad. Right. Wow. So At it's so far. Uh, I got here in January. So next year will be my full winter. So then I'll have the full experience. Okay. But then you know what January is like in the Northeast also. So oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think as an artist being in Seattle is going to be good for what you do? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a beautiful art community here. And I just think I'm I'm always inspired by different people. There's also a lot of like that, like kind of 90s grunge here that has still lived it. on in the city, even though the Amazon has taken over a lot. And I feel like that in itself provides a certain kind of um, like energy around art. And so, yeah, I'm excited to explore that. And I've just started kind of like meeting folks in the art world here. So I've got a long journey and a lot of people to meet. So I'm just excited oh, for yeah. the new, new opportunities. Well, but you, you know, you're not there that long and you just, you got commissioned to do a mural for um, an LGBTQ donut shop. I did. They're <laughs> called Dojoy. They are also all vegan donuts. They are delicious vegan donuts. And uh, yeah, we just got donuts for my birthday. I noticed they had a big blank wall and uh, asked if they were interested in something. And it kind of just came to be. Yeah, it was. A well, but that's a really good point, Stevie, that, you know, you really seized an opportunity. It's a big blank wall. You paint murals and um, <laughs> the rest is history, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's so all about you, making connections and going well, out of yeah. your comfort zone to ask questions sometimes. Now, Seattle has a really great LGBTQ community mm -hmm. from everything I've, I've heard, super creative, supportive, and all of that. Um, it's interesting to me because you did mention Austin. And I still have, uh, so I know a lot of people in Austin, but for me, I still have my, a hard time wrapping my head around like the state of Texas. And yeah the kind of stuff that's going on down there. Austin's like a little pocket. Austin's definitely a safe little hub. There's also right. a really cute little bookshop there called the Little Gay Bookshop. I think that's the name of it. That the is like bookshop. holding down the fort for the queer community in that area. And they well, well, are like, they have a, a little like book section and they have all kinds of different t-shirts and stuff. But like in an area where you don't find a lot of like queer centric shops and stores and spaces like they're they're this tiny little space that is like doing so much in their community and so it was really great to meet them while i was there that was like a highlight for sure oh how, how to that's so cool and you know also on this show i had a nurse on um that works for the um hospital that does transgender procedures that isn't believe it or not austin so you're oh, right really? interesting yeah. Yeah, I was well. That was still interesting to me, but you know, we we Northeasterners were so damn prejudiced. We're like Texas. How could anyone <laughs> have a procedure there? But um, what we learn, right? Because we have to expand our minds. That everywhere you go, there there are pockets of people. Look, they um, they tried to outlaw drag in Tennessee, and there were still shows and marches. So these bills can be put through. 
Um, but the follow through on them, thank God, has been relatively tepid. Yeah. I don't know that it will stay that way. Who who knows? None of us know what the next year is is actually going to bring. You know. So, um, as an artist, like, how do you think? Because I I love that you identify as a proud queer artist. How do you think queer art may differ from? I don't know, art for art's sake. I have a friend that was on here that runs the Dandy Queer Art Site on oh, Facebook. Oh, yeah. You, so you know that I'm for familiar. Patrick. I don't know Patrick specifically, but I, I'm uh, familiar with Dandy. Okay, well, you should follow up because I put, uh, you know, when I was advertising you coming on, I put your picture and everything on his site and with a little blur. Oh, cool. Yeah, to, to tune in. Um, a lot of the art he deals with is erotic art, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I know other queer painters, they do very erotic art, but your art is, so, it's so damn happy. It just, <laughs> you look at it and, and it you It can be happy and erotic sometimes. Right, happy, right. I love it. When art is happy and erotic, that's what I should have called tonight. I feel like my art has like a, a facade of happy where it's, it's, it's happy, it's joyful, it's bright. It's definitely like you look at it and it lifts you up. But right. not all the messages are always happy. And there's definitely like a diverse range of subject matter. And I also do some uh, semi-erotic work that has uh, some phallic shapes hidden in throughout where you might not notice it right away, but that's- Oh my God, that's like, where's the line work. That's <laughs> honestly, my entire childhood is where's Waldo and like uh, uh, Highlights Magazine where you can like- yeah, things Magazine. like. That's been like a huge influence on me and my work. I love like almost all of my pieces have something hidden in them, whether it's words or phrases or symbols or something. So it to me, it creates this like special moment with the viewer where like they're seeing something that's not necessarily for everybody. They're seeing something that's a message that's just like for them because they've spent extra time with the piece. And uh, yeah, because I love that connection when you like find something and you feel that immediate connection you feel like so. you're the only person in the world like if you can go back to highlights magazine and where's waldo when you find it it's the satisfaction like you're the only yeah. person in the world that that could do that my god i i just yeah. I, I totally love that now um you drew as a kid but when did you start to really expand your craft in the arts yeah well i I drew since I could like pick up a crayon, but I feel like um, because of pressure to just um, make money and the whole the old trope of a uh, starving yeah. artist, uh, I kind of put it aside to pursue motion graphic animation. And that's what my my degree is in. You uh, went to SVA, right? You went to the School of Visual yep. Arts. Yeah. Yep. I went to SVA in their uh, computer art program and wow. uh, loved SVA. Had a great experience there. It's a great place. Uh, and uh, did that for a long time. I really did not pick up a paintbrush and start really painting what I would consider like for myself or to pursue like a career in art until 2016 ish. Well, so, so that's very recent. What do you what do you think was the turning point? Because, you know, computer art is fabulous, but it's one kind of thing. But the dimensional art that a person creates with a brush on a canvas is a totally different thing how did that happen for you um i think it was just naturally wanting a release that wasn't digital and i love digital art i love digital work i still do a lot of it all the time um but i don't want to live my life attached to a screen anymore it's already takes up too much of my energy and effort and time oh, and... i hear you loud and clear i yeah right right so ideally i mean i still have lived the day job life right now while i pursue my art so uh, got to like keep those bills paid and all that. But the goal is to eventually, you know, knock on wood in the next few years, uh, be pursuing my work full time again. And right. uh, yeah. Well, I, I'd like to start showing some of your work because we've been talking about sure. it. Let's let's totally take a look right now. OK, Juan, we're ready for the slideshow. Juan is my remote producer for those people who don't know it. There we go. Okay. And I'm putting my glasses on for this. <laughs> okay. Um, let's talk about these pieces. Start with like yeah. the upper left. Yeah. 
The upper left is, uh, it's actually a very kind of like a departure from a lot of the other work that I do, but I was inspired by this specific type of fish. It's called the ethereal snailfish and it lives in like the deepest, deepest depths of the ocean and lives under like crazy amounts of, of pressure. Um, so it's this tiny little delicate fish. That's like one of the, I'm going to get these facts wrong, but one of the, um, smallest multi-celled organisms that exists that you can um, only see now with lidar see i know about this stuff that <laughs> that fish lives down in the dark the black part of the ocean where you can yep. only see organisms like this with lidar technology but you can i've seen slideshows with these things in them they're multi-colored smallest organisms wow yeah and so i was just inspired by the idea of this beautiful tiny creature living under um like in this darkness under this immense pressure and i think that's something we can all relate to and right. at least i do <laughs> right no i know don't we all sometimes feel like we are in darkness under a lot of pressure but again yeah. it, it you know what it as a little but what beauty comes from that sometimes right he looks happy to me he or yeah. she they look happy to me yeah that is very cute and then the one next to it that is my granddaddy clock, and it's uh, it's just a piece thinking through time. I often think about time, and with time, think about life and death. Um, there's some hidden phrases if you look in the body of the clock that say like see it. "lose me, waste me, kill me" as like time phrases of time, like "lose time, waste time, kill time," um, and just wow. kind of thinking through what that all means. Wow. All right, and then we have uh, the two fingers. That is my Spice Girls inspired peace sign. Really? I am a huge Spice Girls fan. I'm, I don't know if you talked to Jamie about that at all when Jamie no, was on the I show, didn't. but Jamie and I are both giant Spice Girls aficionados. Um, and so, yeah, that is my my ode to the Spice Girls peace sign. Okay, I totally, I totally love that. I had no idea you were obsessed with the Spice Girls. <laughs> Who was your favorite Spice Girl? Gro uh, I. Baby Spice. It's so hard. I love Baby them all, but Baby Spice. Baby, Baby Spice. I like Sporty Spice, but... That's love. Jamie's favorite. That's Sporty definitely Jamie Jamie's favorite. Sporty Spice. Um, and then you have an abstract piece. Yep. Then okay. that's just some abstract waves. I've been uh, exploring this idea of, of waves and not necessarily ocean waves, but waves of sound, waves of energy, and kind of uh, how that relates to color and seeing color overlapping other colors and how that uh, makes certain things pop or recede into the background. And so this was initially just a study on waves and color waves. Um, okay. And then uh, I love this big one. I love you, it says. Yeah, it's actually, if you look in the top and towards the bottom, the full phrase says, shut up, I love you, you're my best friend. And I can see uh, the shut up now, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's lyrics to a song. I was commissioned to paint this piece uh, based on uh, the the person's favorite uh, song and lyrics. Wow. And that was, was that meant to be a gift to somebody that commissioned you? Were they giving it to someone? Yeah. They uh, just moved into a new home. So it was their it. Uh, housewarming so gift. It was going to be, wow. And then uh, in the lower left-hand corner, we have a woman. Yeah. That is another, uh, it's a commission for a friend of mine who collects uh, nude art of black women. She is a, proud black woman that loves uh the female form and yeah. so this was for her to add to her collection beautiful really beautiful okay well we're ready for the next ones all right wow. um, I, lo I love I'll this whole group by the way this is like so exciting okay Thanks. and if <laughs> if if it's a lot for me to like go into detail on everyone, definitely feel free to just like pick a couple out and we can. No, no, we're like moving right through. along. So we're, we're right, cool. Good. Okay. We cool. have a heart with like a ring around it. And a, a, what is that? An octopus or a squid? It is a squid. It is a, it is a giant space squid. <laughs> um, it, this was early pandemic when I felt like every other day there was another wild thing happening in the world whether it was the pandemic itself or the killer bees or the oh yeah you know, definitely. Just like every other day was something and i uh was watching the hbo show watchmen and yes. the premise in that show is that there's these kind of squids that fall down onto earth and so 
my idea for this was that this squid was just kind of floating through space and it just accidentally hit into this planet and got tangled up and is trying to get out. And, and there you go. Right. Right. And the perfect image really for what it felt like in the early days of the pandemic filled with like all the stuff that we heard, you know, and we didn't know yeah. if it was true or, you know, what was coming next or anything. And then lips are next. Lips. This was just inspired by uh, some of my friends that are drag artists and the, the, um, you know, just putting color on your lips can change your whole face and your whole look and how uh, lips are perceived and uh, a big part of like the drag and makeup world. Wow. Wow. That's really fun. And then of course we've got the um, two fingers and then one finger. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, this was originally for a door sign that was like a welcome on one side and a don't disturb on the other side. So this was like a two sided piece that was meant for uh, to be flipped over when you wanted yeah, to be so bothered or not bothered. And then if you really don't want to be disturbed, the next one says fuck off. <laughs> yep. That that just says it says it all right. Do don't bother me. OK. And then. Um, wow. I, so how do you like, do you think of these uh, sayings in your head? Like I am safe. It's only change. Is it something that you dwell on or uh, a thought that repeats itself in your head or it's a thought that comes to you and then you put it into the painting? I mean, inspiration comes from me at all angles. I think okay. th this one in particular was uh, a card that somebody gave me that had this phrase on it. I was going through a really awful breakup. Uh, I was, with my ex for nearly seven years and I was going through a really, really hard time going through the breakup and uh, a friend sent me a card with this phrase on it and it wow. incredibly helped me in that moment. And so yeah. I wanted to kind of pay that forward through my art and pass that message along to other people that needed it. Yeah. And that is actually, you know, as a commercial piece, as a card, that would be something really great to send out to somebody. Yeah. I mean, it you affected know? me so much. And so I, I hope that it, it affects others that see it. Oh, yeah. All right. So do you have a dog? Is this your dog? This is not my dog. This is a, a memorial piece for uh, someone's dog that had passed. And so they had sent me a, a couple photos of their dog. And along cool. with there's all the different dogs' nicknames are kind of hidden throughout Where's there. Um, sneakers, right? His name was Sneakers. His name was Sneakers. Sir Sneakers oh, O'Toole. Wow. And uh, yeah, he had lots of lots of different nicknames that are hidden throughout the piece. Wow. And I, you know what I love? I love the movement of his body and then the way the words move around him um, in the same direction. Yeah, I, I mean, movement is so important to me. And I feel like it's an influence that I got through my motion graphic work that has really transformed the way that I look at all art and, and my right. painting. Yeah, well, I can s totally see your background, like in at computer animation, coming through in your painting. How cool is that, right? Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah, a, you can, a I culmination can, of all of the things. <laughs> right, it's who you, you know. What at the end of the day is is who you are. Put down your phone. <laughs> yeah, this is a message for me. Um, <laughs> this Wait, was definitely. <laughs> oh. A thousand percent. Um, I'm working on it. It's something that I struggle with every day. Um, but this was something that I, I needed in that moment. It was like, okay, I, I've, I got a problem here. And so do so many people that are just, you know, it's designed to pull our attention. So right. um, it's just a visual reminder to keep around that you need breaks every once in a while. Right. Right. So put, put down your phone. I too am. Um, I try when I'm out in um, hiking and things like that, I don't look at my phone. That's how I get rid of it. Mm -hmm. because there's no reason to right? when you're doing that kind of thing. But unfortunately, in our day to day lives, I, I tell people I have an umbilical cord to my phone and I hate it. I hate <laughs> to have it so yeah. hooked in. Right? OK. And now is the next message a message to you to follow through? It wasn't. It was to a friend. It's actually follow truth, but also follow through. Uh, so it, it started as like a, a it was uh, a friend made a big move that um, 
was hard for her to make. And uh, this was my way to, to honor how hard that was for her, but to right. also that she was following her truth and that that is what matters in, at the end of the day. Exactly, to, to follow your own truth. Okay, Juan, we are ready for uh, the next group. I love looking at these. Um, yeah, these are such great messages. You know, some are positive, some are just truths, right? But mm -hmm. um, I love this. I can change the world. Yeah, this was at a, a, a YMCA in Hillsboro, New Jersey. And it was just for uh, their kind of youth center. And uh, yeah, this was the, the, the message I wanted as um, a place for people to take photos in front of that they can be Perfect. reminded how powerful they are. Right. Right. So you really, you know, through your art, you empower people. And that's a very important concept, you know, um, because I feel we're go we're going more and more into like a financially driven world and academically driven world. And if we don't get out there and start pushing art, OK, we're going to lose the essence of these kinds of things, uh, the positivity of being able to change the world. You know, people look at yeah. something like this and look at look at the two characters there. They're adorable, you know, and <laughs> they're like, you know, they're your perception of a character, but they're people. They're just regular people. They can change the world. That's a, a very, very powerful message. So the one here that says, yes, tell me about that. Yeah, that's actually my old uh, studio. So this was my old uh, in L.A., my old painting space. And it was more just kind of like me while this was like very early on in my painting journey and just kind of exploring how colors overlap and play with each other. Um, but right. those pieces that you see, aside from the cactus at the bottom, are all also like cardboard sculptures that I made and paper mache and painted because uh, oh, I cool. love the live in a cartoony world <laughs> no I, I i can tell that you do and you know um I, no i can totally understand why because there's something um fun and safe about being in a cartoony world and um this certainly reflects it and then you go down you have a heart beneath that yeah that uh the heart says find joy in the middle as like a kind right. of hidden message and uh there's also other messages around the outside but it was just a, a uh, again like a, a reminder to folks that like um we are not worth our productivity we are not worth our wealth we are worth our life and joy and that to me is the most important thing that we follow that find that joy and follow it you know i completely agree with you but you know, society is giving a totally different message than, than that. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, it's capitalism.com. Yeah. Right. I, I, and I definitely want to talk to you about that because I personally, these days is, is just making me insane. The amount of it and how we're being driven. Now the next one says um, something pride. What does it say? It is white center, which is an area here in near Seattle. Um, so this it. was, Last uh, last year when I was here on my road trip, um, this was their like little local pride. Uh, and I had uh, met the folks who were running their pride and designed this photo backdrop for them. It's and they were still using it this year. I got to go this year and, and see them using it again. So that was well, great. Well, perf it's perfect to have your picture taken in front of it. And then all the way over here, we have you in front of one of your mur murals. Yeah, that is a mural here also in Seattle um, at a... It's at a private residence it's a like an apartment building called the green fire campus and um cool yeah, inspired by like the rain and also the greenery of seattle wow wow so um this has really really been great i want to talk to you more because um now i have a million questions yeah <laughs> we've, we've gone through your art so um let's bring stevie back to the stream Thank you. That was so quick. You see, Juan can really work magic. Yeah. <laughs> he does all kinds of things. He can put slides up, take people out, put them <laughs> back in. Um, you, I, I was reading one of the things you did. You worked with the Trevor Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I was an employee and a volunteer of the Trevor Project back in 2011, 2012. Um, right. And uh, 
was an incredible experience at that time. I know they're they're just such a massive organization now. I feel like yeah. um, at the time there were only maybe 35, 40 employees uh, running the whole that, show. But... So yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh learned so much working there and volunteering there. Honestly, uh, I volunteered on the lifelines and the training just that you go through to be on the lifelines was like life changing for me. And uh, the folks that I got to meet and go through that experience with was incredible. Can you um, go into more detail about the lifelines? Because a lot of people don't know what they are. But by the way, I love Trevor Project. So yeah, if you can talk about the lifelines a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, again, they have so many different resources now from when I was there 10 years ago, which is wild to me. Um, but they um, they offer suicide prevention services that uh, they're most known for their lifeline. So they have a phone number that you can call um, right. at any time of day and you'll get someone who is a LGBTQ affirming person to speak to you about wherever you are in life and what's going on in your day and how to kind of help you out of a crisis situation. Um, they also have chat services online. They have uh, a social network. I think they still have called Trevor Space uh, yeah. for youth. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they've their their volunteers are just the best people in the world. I can't speak oh, for I, all the I staff, especially I, now, but <laughs> the, the volunteers are incredible. Yeah. What kind of training did you have to go through to work on uh, the lifelines? Because, you know, suicide prevention is is tough. And like, what do you what was probably one of the worst things that happened to you when you were on there? And how do you talk to somebody? I mean, to me, the scariest situations are when somebody's like in a car or in a vehicle and they're moving. And so you're trying to talk them into just pulling over. Right. And starting the conversation there. Um, so you those, have to get the car to stop moving. That's number one. You, you try to, I mean, there's people are in all kinds of different crisis situations. So it's just like when, when somebody's like actively moving or something, it's definitely more of a challenge to kind of just bring down the energy a bit. And I think what we're there to do primarily, obviously is talk to folks about what their options are, um, in how to, uh, best move forward in their life. Um, but also just, be an ear and be an LGBTQ affirming person and just let them know that they're not alone. I think one of the, the biggest, now obviously suicide is a very complicated thing and of there course. are lots and lots of factors that go into somebody's decision-making, but uh, that idea of feeling really alone and isolated is one of the biggest problems we face as human beings. And Absolutely. so to let somebody know that you're there and that you hear them and you understand them and you believe them about who they are and what they're experiencing is like that alone can be a big change. Well, yeah, of course, because it takes away that isolation because there's somebody on the other end finally listening. And um, I think it's helpful that you're a stranger. You don't, you don't know this person. So I would tend to think that there may be more trust, right? Because you're coming at them from a completely um, neutral kind yeah. of platform yeah there's it's, no it's, agenda right. it's just uh being there for people to to right. be an ear yeah i think um what i would like to see and I, I honed in on this for a particular reason what i would like to see is billboards all over now i think there's something like 600 bills that have been proposed that are anti-lgbtq and mm -hmm. we know what's going on in places in this country every day you know i, I just most recently read a, another thing about um this was in russia okay but they want to get rid of people being able to get their hormones. Yep. Um, this is so horrific. And here, and I can only speak about the United States because I live here, but I would like to see um, more help billboards. We came out of this pandemic and we're not totally out of it yet. Um, politically, what's going on in this country is absolutely insane. And there's not a day that goes by where you don't read more crazy things. But I don't see billboards up all over, hey, do you need a, a voice to talk to? And I think that that is really lacking because sometimes it gets so complicated for people. All it would take is that 1-800 number 
that actually connects to someone where you're not put yeah. on hold, where you're not given music. All right. Where you're made to feel like you have yeah. some kind of self-worth. And I don't see that happening at all, Stevie. Yeah. It's, I mean, the, the hardest part is getting folks to know that it exists, right? Just Thank getting you. folks to know that the number exists. And right. it's, I, I know that they do a lot of marketing online. A lot of youth are online and that's where they yes. find uh, them through. But I, I agree. I feel like there should be more physical manifestations it's, of that. Yeah, because it's not online, right? It, it, it goes back to your art, you know, if it's hanging on a wall or the mural in the donut shop, every single person that comes in there is going to see that. Yeah, they could pull up the donut shop's website and maybe there's a picture of it on there, but they walk in, they get their donuts, the mural is there, it's right in their face. I really believe in terms of what's going on in our society right now, we need more information for people that's out there and in their face. And yeah. you're right, youth are on their computer, but you know what? They're also but walking not all around. of them. Yeah. 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 They're also walking around and and people are hurting. Especially youth that are living in a really restrictive environment. Exactly. Like they're not necessarily having access to online where they can find community or find people that believe in who they are. And so yeah, I mean all the more reason to have more physical manifestations of it. I would put billboards on all of the billboards uh, right. <laughs> everywhere all at once. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. What is something to me that is um, totally and completely needed. So um, you sound to me like you came through the pandemic just fine. I have, you know, I have another show. I always interview people, especially right. artists. Like what was the pandemic? No, because you know what? You were employed and you were able to, um, go to different places and then settle in your happy place. So you, at least you came out. The start wasn't so easy. Right. I, so I had quit my last job in January of 2020 uh, to pursue <laughs> painting full time and muraling. And uh, so I was like getting all my ducks in a row. I had my, uh, my website was done. My, this was yep. done. And I Not started planned. <laughs> doing all my meetings. I booked uh, like, two murals that were supposed to happen end of March and early April and then canceled, canceled. The one yeah. shop even ended up closing down right away because they were brand new. Um, and so then I kind of like was crawling back to all my freelance clients from back in the day being like, Hey, still need me. Right. Um, and so that, I mean, yeah, obviously everyone was in a, in a tizzy of trying to find, out just like what was going on but at least I, what you could do bet you know what you had done prior right on a computer yeah you were you were actually employable you know it wasn't your desire but you were actually employable so you could make that work yeah it was it was a hard time because people were not trying to spend any money right so like everyone was doing layoffs and cutting back their budgets so it was it was really hard for a while to find enough clients to pay the bills. Luckily, I had saved for this endeavor for me to leave the job. So I had some savings behind me. But uh, yeah, it was a rough go of it until uh, until I got some steady work. Right. Well, what did you tell yourself to keep yourself going? Um, I, I just started volunteering uh, for anybody that I could because I didn't know what to do with myself. And I was right. living by myself. I was six months into my breakup so i was, I was gonna say your relationship had ended you're living by yourself uh you were ready to fly free and get your art together and then boom a bat in the marketplace <laughs> i don't <laughs> believe that by the way for one minute i wish they would stop saying that and they're like and now they're saying we've proven it didn't come out of a lab um so they blamed everything on a bat in the marketplace and it took out the world mm -hmm. Out the the entire world, and when you say that to yourself, so you had your plan, and then your plan got completely blown up. What made you want to volunteer? Where did that come from? I did not know what to do with myself, and I wanted to do something positive. And so um, I had a friend that worked at a, a hospital network, and so I designed a series of posters for them that were just for their healthcare workers, promoting like uh, the idea of that we're all in this together and that like the it. healthcare workers are our heroes. Um, I volunteered for friends that were switching from drag shows to digital drag shows. Right. Doing right. All of the graphic work. Everybody, right. Yeah. So I did a lot of graphics and motion graphics for the early 
digital drag shows. Um, yeah, anything that I could uh, do that felt like it was a positive. Uh, I love impact. it. I'm asking you all of this because to me, it's um, probably five years from now, people are going to start pulling all this incredible stuff that we did up. But for me, it's still, there was so much of it. I performed online in these digital drag shows and I oh, had really? a That's awesome. my Venmo and yep. I did, I, some of it was donations. There were some donations to Triversity. I'm like, oh, just, you know, I didn't feel right taking a tip online on Hot Venmo. I believe me, Stevie, I didn't even have them Mo till all this happened. And yeah. I, you know, the producer of the show would say, where do you want your tips to be sent? And I'd be like, what if nobody tips me? I had no idea. But we've come from there to now. And now when my friends and I talk about these shows that we all did online and right, you are such a talented artist. You are able to contribute to, uh, the graphics to all of that. That all played out for us, and we had to start living ourselves online, our reinvention yeah. of who we were online. And to me, that is still such a, a it's such an incredible thing. It's just another dimension that I would have never predicted. It was, it was, uh, despite all of the the heartache that happened, it was cool to see the creativity that came out of that and when people were forced into an environment that they're unfamiliar with how yeah. they adapted and like changed and yeah i mean it was really it, aside from being scary it was inspiring it was inspiring and some of the the work in the shows i know um my friend chauncey dandridge is a producer and he's the audiologist at stonewall he mm -hmm. would do these shows called freak out online and one of the themes was clowns and i have to bring this up because i will never forget this show the eight people that were on and some of them were my friends. I couldn't believe what they came up with for clowns. I mean, some of it was terrifying. Some of it was funny, but each and every person, the work was so brilliant that I'm sure somebody out there is going to put together an incredible show eventually of the work that was created during the pandemic. Oh it's yeah. I, I look through my phone and I have some videos from that time in the pandemic of just like me videotaping my computer screen of the digital drag shows with my little glass of wine by myself in my apartment. That's and I was great. Like, That's like right. a moment of history that I captured. Right. That is you had a glass so of wine and I had a whole bottle next to me because when it was my <laughs> turn to perform, I was always afraid that like something was going to happen with the Wi-Fi. But that my insanity with Wi-Fi is a whole other thing. Well, um, we are down to the wire. I so totally love talking to you. So Same. I'd like you to tell everybody where they can find out more about you. Yeah, you can go to my website, steviehues.com, S-T-E-V-I-E-H-U-E-S. Um, I will be launching a shop in the next month. So you could buy printed canvases, you could buy this sweatshirt or t-shirts or all kinds of things with my artwork on them. Um, and I'm on Instagram at Stevie Hughes. Okay, and your your company, your pins. Oh yeah, also uh, I am the artist behind Gay Pin Guys. So it's gaypinguys.com and uh, you can find all kinds of fun LGBTQ themed pins, enamel pins. Yeah, they have, some of them have sayings on them, which are really, really cool. You know, I, I love your whole uh, marketing approach. And I have to think some of that came out of the pandemic too. You know, how do we create more dimension into our art? Well, um, for, I have to give a shout out to um, your amazing sister, Jamie Hannigan. Yeah. For you have to have Stevie on. And I, it's so funny because when I wrote you down on my list, I wrote Stevie Hannigan. And then when you got back to me, it was Stevie Hughes, H-U-E-S. Well, of course it's Hughes because you work in color. <laughs> that is that is my artistic uh, pseudonym. Well, yes. Right, exactly. It, total, it, it made total sense to me. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight. Wishing you uh, the best. I'm sure you have a bunch of projects lined up. And I, too many. <laughs> oh, you know what? I love hearing that, Stevie. That's abundance. And you've created your own abundance. So um, thank you for giving such great messages to our audience tonight. And thank you to everybody who tuned in. And I do one more thing before I sign off. I like to take my little on camera cheese picture. This is my art collection of 
my shows and you know they're so hokey i take them on the computer the same way you videotape yourself on the computer i just <laughs> i'm gonna do something with it i don't know what but i'll do yeah something. Right. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for having me. I had a great time. Oh, absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Good night.